Well, hello everyone, my name is Wiggo and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Pokemon ROM hack, Pokemon Last Fire Red. It's pretty similar to Radical Red, but not as difficult. It's still a pretty damn hard game, don't get me wrong there, but not every trainer has a competitive team if that makes sense. And so what I wanted to do was take Ash's team like I've done in the past and use it in this ROM hack, but I will be able to choose out of every single Pokemon that Ash has ever used so that I will have a large pool of Pokemon to pick from. For example, I can go with Charizard from the first team that he had, or I could go with Gengar from the Pokemon Journeys team that he has right now. So in normal Pokemon games, you only have one rival. Well, in this game, you have a bunch of them. And when I say a bunch, I mean like five to six, maybe even more. Everything up until Generation 7 is also in this game. The trainers also have EV trained Pokemon to make the difficulty harder. And that's just scratching the surface. So as always with these videos, I will only be able to use Ash's team, I will be able to use HM Pokemon if needed, I won't be using any items in battle, and that's about that. I would also appreciate it if you could leave a like, let's try to hit 2 likes. I know that's an insane goal, but let's do it. Also, we're less than 4,000 subscribers away from 150,000, so if you could leave a sub, that would be great as well. And with that out of the way, let's just jump right into Pokemon The Last Fire Red with Ash's team. Our name is of course going to be Ash, and our rival is going to be Gary. At the beginning of the game, you have a option where you can choose hard mode, which I did turn on to make the game a little bit harder, and you can also randomize it if you want. If you go downstairs, your mother also gives you the shiny charm, which allows you to, of course, get more shiny Pokemon as you play through the game. It doesn't really matter which starter I pick because I did some research and it doesn't seem like Ash ever owned a Galar starter yet. I could definitely be wrong since I have not watched Pokemon Journeys yet. So after Gary destroys me with his Grookey, I move on with my life and find out that we actually need to fight another rival. You may recognize him from the anime as Richie and his thrusty Pikachu named Sparky. And of course, since I picked Sobble as my starter, I got absolutely destroyed once again. But you have to beat this battle, so I just grinded up a little bit until I could beat the Pikachu and move on. So that I can deliver the package to Professor Oak, get my Pokeballs and actually start capturing Pokemon that Ash has owned. But before we do that, we beat up a team magma and a team aqua grunt together with serena and she gives us the z ring after which i won't use because i'm not a big z move fan i then got picky peck confused with fletchling so i caught a bunch of picky pecks trying to get a good nature until i found out that this is not a pokemon that ash owned so i eventually caught a hoot hoot because he did have a shiny noctal in johto i also captured a Mankey because he did own a primate back in kanto which he released afterwards, but that doesn't mean that we can't use it. I also capture a pit of because in the black and white series he did own an unpheasant as well, and I name it Dove because Dove means pigeon in Dutch. And then I eventually found a fletchling and this is where I finally got rid of the Trumbeak that I had on the team. Luckily I didn't do any major battles with it yet. I also capture a Taylor because he did own a Swellow as well in the Hoenn series, and then I ran into myself. Yeah, I ran into Ash. For some reason, this battle was very hard for me to beat because his team consists of a Riolu, a Pikachu, and a Galarian Farfetch'd. And the biggest reason why this was a hard battle was because of the Galarian Farfetch'd, because it outsped most of my team and hit very hard with Karate Chop and Quick Attacks. And since this game levels up with you because I picked hard mode, leveling up doesn't really do that much for me except for learning better moves. Eventually though, with all the power of my birds, I was able to beat up his Farfetch'd and finally move on to Pewter City. As I arrive in Pewter City, I meet up with May, another rival that you are going to encounter a couple of times in this region. Her team consists of a Munchlax, a Vivillion, and a Torchic. Luckily, my hoodie was able to take out the Torchic with a couple of echoed voices. Then the Vivillion took out my Hoot Hoot, so I switched in Woody the Fletchling, who took out the remaining two Pokemon with some quick attacks and pecks. And after the battle, my Fletchling actually evolved into a Fletchinder. Which is of course not going to be good for the first gym leader, which is Rock-type Brockman. After the battle, she gives me the Deck Snap, which will make it easier for me to find certain Pokemon. Before taking on Brock, I decided to evolve Hoot Hoot into Noctowl, Taylo into Swellow, and Pidov into Tranquil. And you may have noticed that I have a lot of bird Pokemon. And Brock is a rock-hard man that of course only uses Rock-type Pokemon, which obliterate my entire team. 
So basically the only thing that I had to take on Brock was Mankey. And Brock's team consists of a Stone Journer, an Onyx and a Tyrant. While I could most of the time easily take out the Onyx and the Tyrant, the Stone Journer is the one that gave me the most problems because it has a ridiculous defense stat and it's EV trained so that it outspeeds most of my Pokemon as well. And he loves the Dynamax and sweep my entire team with it. So after losing about 50 times to Brock, I finally decided to evolve my Mankey into a Primeape. With Primeape, I was able to take out Stone Journer with three Max Knuckles, also gaining a bunch of attack buffs. And with all of these buffs, I could two-shot Onyx because it did have the sturdy ability, and then I could one-shot the Tyrant with a Cross Chop. This means that we now have our first gym badge, so on my way to the next town I actually encountered a shiny Froakie, which I will of course capture because we all know that Ash has a Greninja. It might not be shiny, but that doesn't mean that I can't have one. I then decided to search some raid dens and in one of them I found a Turtwig, which is another team member that Ash owned back in Sinnoh. So of course I'm not going to pass up the opportunity to capture this. As we head on over to Mount Moon we have an encounter with Team Rocket, but just like like in the anime, they blast off like always. While traveling through Mount Moon, I also picked up the fossil. And as I was about to leave, we also encountered our next rival, Brendan. And this is a double battle and his team consists of a Trapinch, a Zora, a Grovile and a Wilmer. I decide to Dynamax my Frogadier and he decides to Dynamax his Trapinch. I then take out his Zora with Cross Chop from my Madman. I'm able to get off a Max Geyser on the Trapinch but it doesn't quite kill and we get hit with a Max Quake as he then sends out a Grovile. My Frogadier gets taken out by the Grovile, I am able to hit one more Cross Chop but then my Primeape also goes down by the Trapinch's Max Quake. I then switch in Swallow and Noctile and together they can take down the Trapinch before my Swallow also goes down. He then sends in his Whalmer and I send in my Fletchinder. I do whittle down the Grottle into red health before my Noctal goes down, then I take it out with a quick attack and send in Grottle who can take down the final Pokemon Whalmer with a couple of Razor Leaves. After the battle he gives me a Poke SMS. Yes. That's the name of this thing. It's definitely not the Pokenav. In Cerulean City I just found a Master Ball lying around pretty decent. As I try to go to the Nugget Bridge, I get ambushed by Professor Oak, and he hands me over a Mega Ring. And after handing me that, he also wants a Pokemon battle, and his team consists of a team full of starters, that being Pikachu, Eevee, Ivysaur, Charmeleon, and Wartortle. Luckily, all of my birds can go ham on these Pokemon, and I easily come out on top as a winner. And after the battle with Oak, my Grottle evolved into a Torterra, and my Fletchinder evolved into a Talonflame. As I then try to go to the Nugget Bridge again, I get ambushed once more, and this time it's by Gary. His first Pokemon is a Corvus Squire, which can take down my Swellow and my Primeape before I send in Noctile and take it out with two extra sensories. Jagmo O goes down to a couple of Air Slashes. Thwacky then comes out, who is able to take down my Noctile with a couple of knockoffs. So I finish him off with two of Talonflame's quick attacks, and his last Pokemon is Toxel. So I switch into Torterra and finish this battle with an Earthquake. I then get the Fame Checker from Gary, and I don't even know what the Fame Checker even does. To me, it's always been something very useless. Have any of you actually used the Fame Checker before? Let me know. As I was taking on all the trainers, I also got myself a Greninja, and then it was time to take on the second gym leader, Misty, and I don't really know what's going on here. And with Misty, I didn't have that many problems as with Brock, but once again, there was one Pokemon that stood in my way. This time, it was this big fat Wishy-Washy, which does a lot of damage and heals a lot of health every turn and I can barely damage it because my Torterra is mostly dead before I can even get to him. And Wishiwashi being Wishiwashi, it's of course going to hit like a truck. Besides this Wishiwashi, she also has a Palpitoad, a Barascuda, and a Starmie. And those three are most of the time pretty easy to deal with. So after attempting about a dozen times, I was eventually able to beat up Misty. Her lead Pokemon is Palpitoad, but of course, if it comes up against my Torterra, it's dead by a Max Overgrowth. The next Pokemon she sends out is Barascuda, which I take down with a Max Overgrowth after surviving a Max Hailstorm because I did set up some curses on Palpitoad. Next up is Starmie, so I switch in Noctile and take it down with a bunch of Air Slashes, and I also did get paralyzed. Now I have my entire team left to take on this Wishiwashi. Of course, there's nothing that Noctile can do, so I just let it go down, as I then switch in my next Pokemon. 
Swallow, which is able to hit one aerial ace before going down to a single flip turn. Then go into Greninja, which is able to hit two smackdowns before going down. Then I switch in Prime Mape, hit a close combat, and also go down to a flip turn. And with four team members, I've still barely scratched this wishy-washy. I then switch in Torterra, hit a Razor Leaf, but it doesn't quite take it out, and my Torterra goes down but the Wishiwashi changes into its normal form so I can switch in Talonflame to finish it off with a quick attack. After getting our second gym badge, we move on to the SSN where we have another rival battle with Gary. He still leads off with his Corvus Squire, so I switch in my own bird, Swellow, in order to take it out with an Aerial Ace and a couple of quick attacks because it did use a Swagger on me, which of course made my attack go through the roof. Next up is Toxtricity, which I take down with a single Earthquake from Torterra. He then sends out his Rillaboom, I go for the Acrobatics and he hits me and my Flame Body also kicks in. So as I'm about to take out this Rillaboom, he decides to switch in his Hakomo O which gets hit by a Acrobatics and it doesn't take it very well so next turn it goes down to Quick Attack. He then sends in his Rillaboom again which is able to survive another Quick Attack, hit me with an Uproar but another one takes it down. That's Gary defeated, which means that we can move on to the third gym leader, Lieutenant Surge. Lieutenant Surge starts off with a Heliolisk, which I can not hit because it decides to use a Volt Switch and switch into his right shoe. So I hit that with a close combat, and then I hit it again with a close combat before it takes me down with a Grass Knot. So I switch in Swallow to take out right shoe with a quick attack. He sends in Heliolisk again, so I go into Torterra and Earthquake that to take it down. He then goes into Toxtricity, which goes down to a Max Quake, and the last up is Amphor who goes down the same way. And just like that, we have received our third gym badge. As we make our way to Rock Tunnel, we find ourselves in another rival battle together with Gary, Brendan and May. We team up with Gary and we fight Brendan and May, and Gary's Mega Scizor just destroyed their entire team without me having to do a whole lot. After destroying them, we all go our separate ways, and I meet up again with Gary down at the Pokemon Tower. This time he has a Corviknight as his lead, so I lead off with my Donatello. Throughout the battle, I was able to freeze the Corviknight with Ice Punches until he eventually switched out into Toxtricity before I could take it down. I then wanted to take out Toxtricity, but before I could, he already switched it into Rillaboom. So I went for an Ice Punch, and that thing was down too. He then sends in his Hakomo O, which goes down to Ice Punch as well. His next two Pokemon, Corviknight and Toxtricity, of course, both go down to Ice Punches, and then he sends in his final Pokemon, Gyarados. And even this Gyarados couldn't stand up to my Ice Punches, so I literally sweeped Gary with my Greninja. After the battle, I finally captured a Pikachu, and it's a buff Pikachu, so I switched out Swallow for this Pikachu to have some more type diversity on the team. Before we go to Celadon City, we actually have to fight Richie again. And Richie's team actually consists of a decent set of Pokemon being Butterfree, Swallow, Pikachu, Charizard, Agron, and Snorlax. But with the power of Greninja and Torterra backing me up, I was never going to lose this, so I was easily able to beat up Richie. And after I actually beat him, he also gave me a Rocky Helmet, which is a decent held item to have as well. I then found a shiny Poipole, and Ash definitely owned a Poipole in Sun and Moon, even though I didn't watch it, but there is no way that I'm passing up on this. And of course, after capturing it, I named it Poi Poop. Before taking on the gym, I also had to take on a Team Magma and a Team Aqua member together with Brendan. We easily beat the crap out of them as well. And so after this little get up with Brendan, we decide to go and take on Erika, the fourth gym leader with, of course, grass types. But with this team, it wasn't really working out too well because she had an Alolan Executor, which could do so much damage to me, I don't even know how. This thing was definitely a V-Train in attack. And then besides that, she also had a Mega Venusaur, which just wouldn't go down. It would take hits like it was nothing. I could punch it a million times with ice punches from Greninja and I wouldn't even scratch it. And the biggest reason why I was always losing was because Poipoil was not evolved yet. So after getting my ass handed to me, I decided to evolve it into Naganagel. I probably butchered that name. And this is also a very good looking shiny. Never seen it before because I've never used the Naganagel in my life. 
And so I went back to Erica. She starts off with a Ferret Thorn, which I did hit with a couple of flamethrowers from Talonflame before she switched it out into Alolan Exeggutor. I then hit that thing with one Acrobatics before getting taken down by a Dynamaxed Max Rockfall. So I then decided to switch in Greninja and go for the Max Hailstorm to finally take out Exeggutor. Ferretorm came back out again, so I hit that thing with two Max Hailstorms to take it out as well. Tangrowth then took me down with Grassy Glide because that always goes first when there is a grassy terrain on the field. So I then send in Poipoop, and as I set up a nasty plot, she switches into her Venusaur. I then keep on Dragon Pulsing the Venusaur until it eventually does go down, but I did take a lot of damage in the process. She sends out her Tangrowth again, I go for the Dragon Pulse, it doesn't finish it off, and it is able to take me down. So I switch in Noctowl, and one more Air Slash finishes off Erika, which gives us our fourth Gym Badge. And before we can go and get our fifth Gym Badge, we have to take on Giovanni down at his hideout in the game corner. And Don Giovanni actually has a Mega Flygon, and this thing looks so cool. Please, Game Freak, make this happen. It's all we want. Forget about the Sinnoh remakes, just give us more Mega Pokemon like this one. But luckily, my Greninja was able to take down his Mega Flying on with Ice Punch, the next Pokemon Extra Drill went down to a Hydro Pump, but then my Greninja got taken out by the Hippo Down. So I send in Poi Poop, and he sends in a Seismic Toad and also heals up his Hippo Down. I low kick the Pokemon a couple of times and Dragon Pulse them as well, but then my Primeape goes down, as they are both into red health. So I then switch in Noctowl in order to take down both of their Pokemon with Dragon Pulse and Moonblast, and his last Pokemon is Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan is able to take down my Poi Poop, but then I can just switch in Torterra and finish this thing off with Earthquake. We then get the Sylph Scope, and with that we can go to the Pokemon Tower, so I capture myself a Ghastly there, because Ash now does have a Gengar. After getting the Ghastly on my team, I also saved Mr. Fuji. I then made a Snorlax very angry with my Poke Flute, and I captured that thing as well, because Ash also has Snorlax with more than 4 moves. We then make our way to Fuchsia City, and before we can enter the Pokemon Center, we have a battle with Serena, and together with Serena, we face Ash and Richie. But Ash and Richie absolutely destroyed our asses. I mean, they had a Melmetal and a Mega Charizard Y, so that kind of explains it, I guess. But luckily, this is an mandatory fight that you have to win, so after losing, we get our Pokemon healed. We also get some Mega Stones, which we will never use because Ash does not have these Mega Pokemon. And I thought that losing was also pretty fitting because Ash also loses a lot in the anime. So after that battle, we take on Koga as our fifth gym leader. Koga starts off with a Drapion, so I go ahead and set up some nasty plots and then take it down with two Dragon Pulses. Scolipede is up next, which also gets destroyed by a single Dragon Dragon Pulse. Next up is Muck, so I hit it with Dragon Pulse, but it doesn't do as much damage as I would like it to do, so I get hit with an Ice Punch, I then Dynamax and take it out with a Max Worm Wind. He then sends in Garbodor, which he Dynamaxes, and is able to hit me with one move before I take it down with two Max Worm Winds and a Thunderbolt. His last Pokemon is a Mega Gengar, but of course, I can take that thing out with a single Dragon Pulse as well. I then go ahead and pick up the HM for Surf down at the Safari Zone, and I make my way to Sylph Co, where I have to do a lot of battles. And the first one is against Gary. He starts off with Corviknight and I lead off with Talonflame. And in the end, after I burn it with some flamethrowers, we do go down at the same time. Next up is Komo O, which takes down my Naga Nagal with an Outrage after I hit it with a Dragon Pulse. So I switch in Greninja and take it out with an Ice Punch. Next up is Toxtricity, so I switch in Torterra and I go for the Razor Leaf because it's holding an Air Balloon, so I can go for Earthquake straight away. Then I go for the Earthquake and of course it takes it down. Next on out is Rillaboom and I'm able to hit an Ice Punch before he switches out into Gyarados. And this Gyarados eventually takes down my Greninja, so I go into Noctowl, hit a few Moonblasts and a couple of Air Slashes to eventually take it down. Then his Rillaboom comes out again, so I go for the Air Slash and finish off Gary. And normally you would have to take on Giovanni by now, but actually there is another roadblock in our way, and this time it's Archie and Maxi. And together with Brendan, we have to take them on. They have Primal Groudon and Primal Kyogre on their team, which is not looking too well with my non-legendary team here. But after those are out of the way, their team is basically an easy sweep. 
I just set up some nasty plots with my Nagan Nagel, and then I Dragon Pulse the Groudon and the Kyogre in order to take them both down pretty easily, and the rest of their team was just swept. So after defeating Archie and Maxi, we can move on to Giovanni. And it was time for the battle with Giovanni, which in the end was really easy for me to beat, because it was still running the same team as in the Team Rocket hideout, except this was a single battle, not a double battle. And Greninja definitely did most of the work there, because of course most of his team is also weak to it. So after winning from Giovanni, it was time to take on Sabrina, but before we take her on, I was going to have to switch up the team a little bit. So I added in Snorlax, which is going to be a very decent special defensive tank, and also Ghastly, which I did evolve into a Hunter and a Gengar. After that, I went to Sabrina and decided to take her on. This didn't really go that well because her team is pretty stacked. Two Pokemon on her team gave me a bunch of trouble and those were Calyrex, which is the new Pokemon from the Sword and Shield DLC, and the other was Mega Gardevoir, which just hits like a truck. And not only can she hit like a truck, she also takes hits like a truck. It was pretty bad because even if I had my six team members, this Gardevoir alone could sweep me without even setting up something. And that's of course because all of her Pokemon have the right natures, EVs, IVs, and mine don't really have that because because I didn't really find any good EV training items like the Macho Brace and Power Anklet and stuff, but they are definitely in the game if you're looking to EV train as well. So after a couple of hours of attempting, I eventually was able to beat Sabrina, and this was definitely the hardest battle up until now. Sabrina starts off with a Malamar, which I gladly can take out with an Earthquake or two from my Torterra, as she then sends in Hatterene, which of course is going to be able to take down Torterra after I hit it with one more Earthquake. I then send in my Snorlax and go for two more crunches to finally take down this Hatterene, and it also was able to set up a Trick Room. Next up is Mega Gardevoir, so I decide to stay in with Snorlax, and I'm able to hit two crunches before going down. I then switch in my Talonflame, get hit with a Thunderbolt and take it down with an Acrobatics because we were able to hang on. Next one out is Slowking and I'm able to hit two Acrobatics before getting taken out by a Flamethrower. So I then go into my Noctowl, I put the Slowking to sleep and I also get hit by the Future Sight. I then hit three Air Slashes but they barely do any damage and I of course get taken out by a Sludge Bomb. I then switch in Greninja, go for the Night Slash but she switches into Calyrex and the Night Slash leaves it with literally one HP so I Dynamax. I also get hit by a Max Phantasm but that doesn't do enough damage and I take out the Calyrex. Then she sends out a Slowking again and one more Max Darkness can win me my sixth gym badge. Which means that we can move on to Cinnabar Island to take on the 7th gym leader Blaine. Blaine starts off with a Galarian Darmanitan. So I start off with Greninja and hit a Surf as he heals up. I then hit a Water Shuriken and he changes into his Ice type form. So I then go into Talonflame to hit a Flamethrower as he then switches back into his Fire form and as I'm about to take him out, he switches into his Typhlosion. And this thing is actually a Mega Typhlosion, which also looks very cool. Luckily, I hit two Acrobatics in order to take down this Typhlosion while getting hit with a Wild Charge. He then switches in Torkoal, so I go into Torterra and I get put to sleep after I hit him with two Earthquakes. Sadly enough, after that, I'm not able to hit another Earthquake and I get taken out by a Flamethrower. So I switch in Gengar and as I'm about to take out the Torkoal with a Shadow Ball, he switches into his Magmortar. So I hit a Shadow Ball on that thing. Next turn, I think I'm gonna outspeed this. I, so I go for a Shadow Ball and a Magmortar outspeeds and takes me down from full health with a Flamethrower. So I decide to go into Noctowl, which can tank a hit and then take out Magmortar with Air Slash. He sends out his Torkoal again, which also goes down to Air Slash. He then sends out his Turtonator, which he Dynamaxes and of course kills me with a Max Flare. So I go into my Greninja, hit three Max Geysers in order to take down this Turtonator. His last Pokemon Darmanitan comes out again, I go for the Water Shuriken and get my 7th Gym Badge. And so we can now move on to the final Gym Leader, Don Giovanni. And he's still rocking his usual team, but now he has added an Armored Mewtwo. And this thing was, up until now, the biggest threat that I had to face. Because it was not only bulky, it could also one-shot most of my team members. I don't really know if this thing has different stats from a normal Mewtwo, but I'm pretty sure that it has less special attack but more defenses. At least that's what it felt like. And I'm also pretty sure that a Steel type is added here as well, so it's a Steel Psychic type. So with this added bulk, 
it really does not want to go down very easily. So I had to attempt this battle over a hundred times easily. Maybe even more than that, I didn't count. But eventually I was able to work out some kind of strategy in order to win against Giovanni because most of his other team members, except for Mega Flygon, were an easy one shot or two shot. I also grinded my entire team up to level 100 for this battle because it had to happen eventually. So Giovanni starts off with a Kangaskhan and I lead off with my Primate. And I'm lucky because a single close combat takes it down all the way from full health. The next Pokemon on the list is of course his Mega Flygon. So I switch in Noctile and put it to sleep with Hypnosis. I get hit with a Dragon Claw but I'm luckily able to survive with 11 HP. So I switch in Donatello and try to go for the Ice Punch but he is smart and switches in his Gigalith. So I do the same thing, I switch out my Greninja into Torterra to take out the Gigalith with a critical hit Earthquake. Flygon comes back out so I naturally go back into Greninja to take it out with an Ice Punch. He then sends in his Armored Mewtwo which I'm able to hit with a Night Slash before going down to a Max Steel Spike. I then go into Torterra which is able to hit an Earthquake before going down. After Torterra goes down I switch in Talonflame who is able to hit a Flamethrower and also burn the Mewtwo before going down to a Side Strike. So I then switch in Gengar and Giovanni uses a full restore on his Mewtwo but I Dynamax go for Max Phantasm and that finally takes out this Mewtwo. The next Pokemon is Aggron and after hitting it with a couple of Max Phantasms and Shadow Balls it eventually takes me down with some Earth Powers. So I go into Primeape, go for the close combat and finally finish off Aggron. That was his last Pokemon, that means that we now have 8th Gym Badges but before we move on to the Pokemon League it's time for one more rival battle with Gary. Gary leads off with a Mega Gyarados so I naturally am going to lead off with Primeape and take him down with two close combats because he decided to go for a Hyper Beam which means that he had to recharge a turn. Next up is Toxtricity, so I go into Torterra, go for the Razor Leaf to take out the Air Balloon, and then finish him off with an Earthquake. Corviknight is up next, so I go into Gengar, hit it with a Thunderbolt, he hits me with a Brave Bird, but the Regal damage takes him down while my Gengar is still alive. Next on out is Koma O, so I go into Greninja to go for the Ice Punch, but it doesn't even do that much damage. I get hit with the close combat and die. So I then switch in Woody to finish off this thing with an Acrobatics. Next on out is his Snorlax, I go for two Acrobatics and because he set up a Belly Drum that is enough to take him down before he could even hit me. And last up is of course Rillaboom who can't stand up to my Talonflame either. Two more Acrobatics and we win against Gary which means that we can move on to the Elite Four. But before we take on Lorelei, it is time for me to do some switching up in my team. I decide to go to the movie learner to learn Flare Blitz to my Talonflame, Hypnosis to my Gengar, Seed Bomb to my Torterra, and there is also an ability switcher here which I used to change my Greninja's ability into Battle Bond. And with these new changes to the team I decided to head on over to the Pokemon League and take on Lorelei. And this is a double battle and she starts off with Ninetales and Vanillox. So I lead off with Primeape and Talonflame. I decide to double up on the Ninetales with Flare Blitz and Close Combat and she Dynamaxes her Vanillux and hits me with a Blizzard from Ninetales. Luckily turn 1 we can take out the Ninetales and she sends out Frostlass. So I go for another Flare Blitz on the Frostlass which takes it down to a Sash. And I also burn it but the Regal damage takes down my Talonflame. And a Max Steel Spike takes down Primeape. Luckily the Frostlass also goes down to the burn damage. I then switch in my Greninja and Gengar and she sends in her Glalie, Mega Glalie to be exact. So I decide to hit it with a Surf and a Shadow Ball which does take it out but my Gengar also goes down in the same turn. Luckily this did activate my Greninja's Battle Bond ability. So I then go into Snorlax and she switches in a Regice. So my Greninja goes for a couple of Max Gyarados on the Vanillux to take it out and my Snorlax gets hit by a couple of superpowers while I return some crunches to the Regice. She then sends out her final Pokemon Lapras and I take out the Regice with another Max Geyser but then before my Snorlax can even attack the Lapras sadly enough takes me out. So I then go into Torterra my last hope but he also isn't able to hit a single time because we get taken out by an ice type move. I then keep on night slashing away with my Greninja and eventually we do come out on top. And just like that we defeated Lorelei which means that it's now time to move on to Bruno. And Bruno's first two Pokemon are Mega Lucario and a Kamo-O. So I once again lead off with Primeape and Talonflame. 
This time I do get hit by a Clanging Scales and a Dragon Pulse before taking down Lucario with a close combat and doing a lot of damage with Acrobatics on Como O. Next on out is Scrafty, so then I take out Como O with Acrobatics and Scrafty with close combat. And after that he sends in a Terrakion and a Beware. So what I do now is I set up a Tailwind with Talonflame in order so that my Pokemon always go first. Then I go for the close combat on Terrakion to take it out from full health, luckily. And the Beware kills my Talonflame with an Iron Head, but my Flame Body also kicks in. I then send in my Gengar and he sends out his final Pokemon Urshifu. I decide to go for the Max Phantasm here which lowers the defense as well. And I then hit a close combat to take out Beware before he takes my Primeape out with a Max Hailstorm. I then go into my Donatello to take out Urshifu with a Max Phantasm and another Surf. Now we can go to the third Elite Four member, Agatha, with her Ghost Types, and this was definitely the easiest one out of all of them. And Agatha's first two Pokémon are Delmize and Mimikyu, so I lead off with Snorlax and Gengar. So Agatha Dynamaxes her Mimikyu, and I Dynamax my Gengar. I try to hit the Mimikyu, but it sadly enough uses Max Guard, so my Snorlax hits a Crunch on the Delmize, and I get hit with a Giga Drain. Next turn, I am able to hit one Max Phantasm, but that only breaks the disguise of the Mimikyu before they take down my Snorlax with a Max Starfall and an Anchor Shot. So I go into Donatello, I take out the Mimikyu with a Max Phantasm and I hit an Ice Punch on the Delmice as I get hit with a Sludge Wave. She then sends in her Calyrex, who takes down Gengar with an Expand Force, so I go for the Night Slash on the Calyrex and that takes it out. Which also activates my Battle Bond on Greninja. So I send in Talonflame and she sends in Aegislash. I go for the Night Slash to finally take out Delmice and the Flare Blitz hits on the Aegislash as well. But he had an Okaberry which reduced the power and he also was able to set up a Swords Dance. She then sends in her Dragapult and I go for the Night Slash on it before they sadly enough take me down. So I switch in Primeape and I go for Acrobatics on the Dragapult to take it down, but the Aegislash goes for King Shield, which means that my Stomping Tantrum does not work. The last Pokemon she sends out is a Mega Gengar, so I go for the Acrobatic Stomping Tantrum combo to take out Gengar, and now it's only Aegislash left. Aegislash takes out my Primeape, so I switch in my Final Hope Torterra, I keep on Earthquaking and Flare Blitzing, but it did use a King Shield and take down my Talonflame, but my second Earthquake did take down Aegislash, which means that we can now move on to Lance, the final Elite Four member. And his first two Pokemon are a Mega Flygon and a Dynamaxed Garchomp. So I lead off with my Talonflame and my Greninja. So I go for the Acrobatics Max Hailstorm on the Garchomp in order to take it out, but only because my Max Hailstorm was a critical hit. He then sends in his Duraludon, so I go for Max Hailstorm on the Flygon to take it down, and I get hit with a Draco Meteor as well. The next Pokemon he sends out is a Latias, so I go for the Max Hailstorm Acrobatics combo to take that thing down as well, and I get hit with another Draco Meteor by Duraludon. Don. He then sends out a Dragalgi and I go into my Gengar and I go for the Blizzard Shadow Ball combo but that does not take out any of the Pokemon. But he was finally able to take down my Greninja. So I then took down the Dragalgi with a Shadow Ball from Gengar and the Duraludon with a Low Kick from Primeape. And his last Pokemon is a Hydragon. And that thing first takes down my Gengar with a Dark Pulse before Primeape finishes it off with a Low Kick. Which means that we can now move on to the Champion Gary. And Gary starts off with a Galissapod, so I lead off with my Gengar. I'm able to hit one Thunderbolt, but then his emergency exit kicks in and he switches into his Zera Aura. I predict the Plasma Fist here, so I switch into Torterra. He's then able to hit me with two Fire Punches as I go for a Seed Bomb and an Earthquake. He then sends in his Galissapod, so I go into Primeape. He hits me with a Flying Press, which does not take me out luckily. I then go for the Rock Slide and I finish it off. He then switches in his Mega Metagross and I go into my Talonflame and set up a Tailwind as he hits me with a Zen Headbutt. I'm able to hit one more Flare Blitz and the recoil damage actually takes me down. So I go into Greninja to finish off Metagross with a Night Slash and that also activates my Battle Bond ability. He then sends in his Volcanion so I switch in Primeape, go for the Earthquake and do decent damage but I also get taken out by an Earthquake myself. I then go into Snorlax to hit two more earthquakes and finish off 
Volcanion. Nixon out is Latio, so I switch back into Greninja, go for the Night Slash, and this takes it out from full health. And his last Pokemon is an Imposter Ditto, so I let him change into my Torterra, who is able to hit me with an Earthquake and take down my own Torterra. I then switch in my Greninja, which also gets taken out because I missed my Blizzard. Then go into Gengar, hit a Shadow Ball, but that isn't even enough. And I get hit with an Earthquake, which takes me out as well. And so I go into Snorlax, but he struggles for some reason. And I go for the Blizzard, finally taking out this Torterra. Which means that I have now defeated Pokemon The Last Fire Red with only Ash's Pokemon. This challenge was actually pretty hard because the game itself is pretty hard. Not because I wasn't using any good Pokemon. Ash's team is actually pretty decent if you put all of his good Pokemon together. I know I probably could have had some better team members than what I had on the team right now now, but in my opinion it was still pretty decent. So with that out of the way, if you guys would like to see me use more trainer teams, definitely leave that in the comments down below. And as always, I do want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters, thank you for supporting me through these times. And with that out of the way, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo and I'll see you guys next time.